Welcome my name is Michael, and I am today's host. Today we will discuss about these topics, first whether SN15 is ready for launch this week. Second, what are the major changes that SpaceX has made in SN15 prototype. Third, BN1 and BN2 update. Fourth, improved Raptor vacuum engines and. Fifth, it's Mac Gregor test facility. Starship SN15 is the next phase of prototype testing, thanks in part to the successes with SN8 onwards, resulting in the scrapping of SN12, 13, and 14. This progression may also provide automatic mitigation of SN11's issue. SN15 has hundreds of design improvements across structures, avionics software and engine Elon tweeted hopefully, one of those improvements covers this problem. If not, then retrofit will add a few more days. SN15 rolled from the mid-bay to the high bay during the week, ahead of receiving its nose cone, which has since been mated to the stack. It will make the trip down Highway 4 this week, after the impressive Lieber LR1600 crawler crane made the trip for the task of raising SN15 on the launch mount. This vehicle marks the second phase of testing for the full-stack Starship prototypes, ahead of pushing on to the orbital vehicles, which is expected to open with the SN20 vehicle. Next major technology rev is at SN20. Those ships will be orbit-capable with heat shield and stage separation system. Ascent success probability is high. Although Elon confirmed the orbital attempt would be as reported, with SN20 and Super Heavy BN3, the claimed target date of by July was always highly ambitious. The likelihood BN3 will be the Super Heavy to conduct the flight is also subject to change. Currently stacked in the high bay, BN1 was never going to hop. However, it was expected to be proof tested and at one point was potentially static fired with a couple of Raptors. While SpaceX may take the opportunity to test how to roll such a tall booster down Highway 4, it appears likely the Pathfinder will likely be scrapped at the production site. BN1 is a manufacturing Pathfinder, so will be scrapped. We learned a lot, but have already changed design to BN2 Elon noted, with the design change likely to be related to the position of the LOX and CH4 tanks in the stack. Amazingly, Elon added that SpaceX aims to complete the stacking of the BN2 Super Heavy booster, which is currently in sections outside the high bay, in time to roll out and lift it on to the yet-to-be-completed orbital launch site. The goal is to get BN2 with engines on orbital pad before end of April. It might even be orbit-capable, if we are lucky, Elon added, with orbit-capable a highly surprising statement given his initial note about the first test of a Super Heavy originally being a 150-meter hop. SpaceX's rocket development and test facility has been an integral part of its success since it acquired the facility in 2003. Every new engine built at SpaceX's factory in California passes through McGregor ahead of being sent to the launch site as a unit or as part of a rocket stage. The facility has grown in size during its SpaceX tenure, with the addition of numerous test stands, including the conversion of the original stalwart Falcon 9 tripod stand, which now hosts vertical Raptor testing. Raptor engines are also tested in two horizontal bays, with long-duration testing now into the SN60 range, the engines with the cited improvements. The second Raptor VAC was also spotted on the horizontal stand last week via NSF's Gary Blair in the 2 Lira McGregor section. The Raptor vacuum, with its huge nozzle, will be the engine that will provide the bulk of Starship's propulsive power in space. So far, testing this engine has been progressing. Elon had previously cited the advantage of vertical testing for Raptors as one reason the tripod was converted to hosting the Starship engine. Testing Raptor in vertical configuration should allow us to simplify some aspects of the engine design. Soon, McGregor will have two additional vertical test stands for Raptor, with the construction of a new stand ongoing at the Texas site. The new Raptor stand has an underground diverter, and each of the vertical test bays will be available for testing both sea level and vacuum optimized Raptors. Importantly, it will also cater to the future demand for Raptor engines, which will exponentially increase during the early phase of Super Heavy testing. Super Heavy will eventually sport 28 Raptor engines. 
While the goal will be to return all the engines on the fully reusable launch system, SpaceX will be prepared to ensure Raptor availability is in tune with the potential loss of engines during the early phase of full-stack test flights. That's all for now. Subscribe the channel for more updates. Till then keep watching.